So in this video, let's walk through a simple process to find the best settings for any artwork with any laser every single time. And to get there, we are going to be using test files, but not just like an engrave and a cut test file, but a whole range of tests that are really gonna let you dial in what you're trying to create. Now, full disclosure, these are my custom test files and you can purchase them down at the link below. But before we get into these and how they can help you, let's talk about a quick and free way you can do this directly inside of Xtool Creative Space. And Xtool Creative Space is key because that is the software that these tests are specifically designed for. Uh, I plan in the future to make a light burn version of those. Now, in terms of testing, I like to use three millimeter birch plywood. This is stuff I usually find on Amazon. It's like 12 by 12 inches square. I'll also include a link down below if you want to check this out. But I found this is a pretty good all around stock for diode and CO2 lasers in order to get some good test settings. So if you have a brand new piece of material and then you're trying to find out the best settings, there are actually two free ways you can do it inside of Xtool Creative Space. So first, something that is already directly built in. And so I have already connected my Xtool S1 because this is going to be machine specific. Uh, and what you can do is if I just drop in some quick text, so some quick text, and let's say that I wanted to engrave this. I'm gonna come over here to engrave. What you can do is actually select the material directly inside of Xtool Creative Space. So I'm gonna come over here. You can see it says user defined material and my mode, which is process on the base plate. Process on base plate is basically like the standard, just putting material in there and then engraving and cutting. But we want to define the material. So you can see I actually have a lot of material that's already preloaded. Uh, and I'm gonna go in here uh, and I'm actually gonna select three millimeter bass wood plywood, even though this is pine, because when I do that, if I then click on any artwork uh, and then I click what I want it to do. So you can see this updates from processing settings, which is like overall to object specific settings. Well, I can't say that. Uh, and you can see that we actually get a reference setting right here. And so um, it's giving us a power of 20 and a speed of 250 with a pass of one. Now also I am using um, Xtool Creative Space's uh, beta version. So I'm actually using version 2.79 beta. So this might look a little bit different, especially where they put the settings. Sometimes they just have them drop directly down here. But in general, these principles are gonna apply the things might be located a little bit different places. Okay, so if I open up my easy set panel, like I said, uh, we already have something that is already set. So we got 20 and 250, but specifically we have this guy right down here, um, which is actually a test file that Xtool has taken a picture of. And you can see the little green guy right there is already selected its recommendation, um, but you can adjust it by visually looking at uh, their picture. And as I'm clicking these, you can see those values are changing. Uh, now they don't have this for every single piece of material. Uh, and actually, if I switch this over to pine plywood, you can see that even though it does give me a reference of 30 and 400, I don't have that picture uh, that one click set where I can go in and select it. Some of your abilities are gonna be a little bit different depending on your material. And what's also nice is those settings will update and specifically that picture will update um, as we're changing the operation. So you can see we switched it over to cut. So it's 15 and 100 on speed and power and then score 150. Uh, and it's really easy to add in more material and actually check to see what they already have. If you've come over to your material, come over here to the material easy set library. It should automatically filter by the machine that you're using and specifically the machine power. So you can see I've got the S1 40 watt as a filter but if I unselect that, that's gonna be a lot more options to be able to select. But I actually do wanna use 40 watt version and apply. And then if I just type in plywood, you're gonna see I'm gonna get a bunch of different types of plywood. Uh, so let's say if I wanted to use the black walnut plywood, it's gonna have a picture and then you can adjust if you want score, cut, engrave, or bitmap engrave image. And we're gonna get into images a lot more with my custom test files here in a second. But basically, you can just bring this directly inside of Xtool Creative Space and then select what type of processing you wanna do and then go from there. But always with lasers, they can be pretty finicky and they can be really specific to not only your laser, but your material and your artwork and even the environment that you have it in. Uh, so like humidity and altitude and all that kind of stuff could actually affect how it looks. Really being able to actually physically look 
at a engrave in different like lighting conditions as well is really, really helpful. So a picture is nice that they've done that, but I still recommend doing this so you can physically look at it yourself. Now, the second free way to do this actually does involve making a material test. And this is something that is directly built into Xtool Creative Space. And you basically create it yourself, but it's not from scratch. They make it a little bit easier for you. So the first thing that you have to do is actually add in uh, the artwork that you wanna make the test around, like a square or a circle are pretty common for what people like to do. So I'm gonna go in here and drop in a square. I'm gonna select this. And then in this version, if you come over here to the application over here on the left, you can click it, and then you can make a material test. I think on the previous version, it might be up at the top, um, but you should be able to find this material test array. I'm gonna select that. And you can see when I do, if I move this over, it makes a material test. And then you can adjust the uh, min and the max on the power, as well as the min and the max on the speed. And you can adjust the number that you're doing. So if you maybe, if you wanna do a 10 by 10, and then you can adjust also the distance between them, depending on the size of the material that you are working with. Uh, I'm gonna drop this back down to five. And you can see we have our material test. Now, one key thing to remember when you do this is whatever the setting was uh, when you first made your artwork. So in my case, if I like right click and ungroup this, um, I had this set to score. So uh, everything else was also set to score. So if you wanted to do an engrave, you'd basically need to do the same thing, do a square, select engrave, and then go in and do your material test and then hit okay. And then you can just like process this and send this to the machine and you're going to be good to go. Now those are great, but you're pretty much either doing an engrave or a cut for the most part. Uh, and I actually find it is really beneficial to have a little bit more detail in the test. So that is what all of these are designed to do. So I will be updating these in the future so they might look a little bit different, um, but for the most part, this is what you're going to get. Um, the very first one, when you open it up, is going to be an engrave test. And I've put instructions for you to follow over here on the right. In general, just keep in mind, these are designed for three millimeters plywood, and I'm using a 40 watt machine, specifically the S1, but you can adjust the settings as needed. And actually the process of going through the test I'm hopefully making it pretty easy to where you're not gonna get some flare ups or flames because the number one thing with lasers is we wanna keep it really safe for you. All right, one thing to keep in mind is it should say user defined material. So it shouldn't automatically already have material in there. Sometimes I find that will actually override some of the settings that I have in it. But in general, let's kind of walk through this in terms of the layers and how they're put together. So uh, everything that is the same color is the same layer in Xtool Creative Space. So everything black, um, it's not only my text, but it's also on my text layer. And in the beta, the layers are down here with the little circles. Uh, and then I think on the previous version, they actually have them written out over here on the left, which I like a little bit easier. But you could also just click this layer guy right here. And I'll bring up this little pop-up so you can see all the different layers that are in there. Uh, and even before we get to the text, so the instruction layer is blue. And then one thing you can do with pretty much every single piece of artwork inside of Xtool Creative Space is you can decide if you want to output it or not, meaning, do you wanna send this to the laser when it's time to engrave and cut? So in the case of my instructions layer, if I click the layer, it selects every single thing within the layer. That's super helpful. Uh, you can see I do not have this set to output, but let's move on down to the text layer. Um, again, you can see everything that is selected. This initially is not set to output specifically on the engraved text because I want you to run the fast engrave, the medium grave and the slow engrave one at a time. And then once you run those, you can decide like what would actually be the right setting to use for my text layer. Or you could just use some recommended settings from Xtool to get a start as well. Uh, but initially that's why this isn't set for an output. Now I give you the step-by-step -step over here in the instructions, but in general, the very first thing you're actually going to run is this green test layer. Um, green is going to be like your safest test, meaning this is going to be the fastest speeds for your laser. And as you're bringing down those speeds, that's when you're more likely to have the flare ups um, or you're just like destroying the material and you're really running it more than it actually needs to be run. So you're kind of running the test in three different phases. So you can see green is set to output. If we come over here to process, then you can see that is just what is going to get processed. And then from there, all you have to do is to select your green layer, turn it off, go to your yellow layer or the medium engrave, turn it on, 
and run it and so on and so forth with the slow layer as well. So then at the end, you are going to have what, 100 squares? You're not gonna have any text. And so what you can do is then look at the squares and you're gonna have to like count and match up the numbers um, to your screen and, and see what's gonna be the best setting for your text. And then actually be sure and turn on your text layer and then engrave it. And then finally, if you actually want this cut out from your material, you can see we have this purple frame layer. And again, the setting for that, you could pull from just like the stock settings directly inside of Xtool, or you could do like the same process with the engrave uh, as with the cut test to find like what's gonna be the best settings to cut something out. But once you have that, then you can go in and run the entire test, and then you'll wind up getting something like this. So that is the engrave test, uh, switching over to the cut test. And I have all of these tests saved within the same project inside of Xtool Creative Space. On the beta, to get to those, if you just click this right up here, this little tab, it's gonna give you all of the tests right here, and they can select which one you want. And I think on the previous version, they had them tabbed down at the bottom. Um, but just know pretty much all this is in one single file. And I will have different files for uh, the Xtool P2, which um, the Xtool S1, and it's gonna be for all of the different watts, and then the Xtool D1, all of the different watts it provides. And you're pretty much using the exact same test. It's just gonna be the text inside. It's going to be updated depending on the machine that you're using. Um, the Xtool F1 and the F1 Ultra, those are gonna be different because you have access to a fiber laser, and so you're gonna have some different settings for that. So know if you pick this up, you can pretty much use it with any diode or CO2 machine you might have from Xtool. And if you just wanna update it yourself, all of this text is editable. So um, you can just double click and then adjust the text. Let's say we're using Slate and we're actually using the 40 watt version. I actually think I had it set to 20 watts earlier. And actually before we get to the cut test, a few other like default settings I'm also doing is uh, you can see right here, we have the set to 100 lines per centimeter. And this is more or less like your dots per inch or like your DPI if you're coming from the US and you're used to like resolution settings and you can adjust this if you want, going back into the easy set panel, um, you can see you can go from 100, you can actually start it 10 and go all the way up to 300. But I find for doing vector engraves like this, 100 lines per centimeter works pretty well, but you could adjust that and see the results. Now, that's very different than the bitmap engrave, which we have a bunch of tests for that we're gonna talk about here in a second. So now switching over to the cut test, everything is going to be pretty much exactly the same. And I would say this one also be super careful when you're running these tests. Let's say you run uh, the fast cut and maybe you see at 16 millimeters per second, you're getting through the material pretty much at all powers. At that point, you really don't need to run faster tests because all you're really gonna be doing is charring your test uh, and you're not getting any more results that you already know. Because with the cut test, again, you're trying to balance the power and the speed as well as the quality. And the only setting with this is this is set to one pass. Cuts, you might want to adjust the pass. So you could bump this to a two pass or a three pass. And if you're doing that, I would definitely encourage you not to run the fast, the medium and the slow all at the same time. And there's actually a setting in here if you are wanting to do a multi-pass test is um, you can lower the focus. So let's say I want to do three passes. You can actually have it lower the laser head between each pass and you can put in the distance that you want right there. All right, and then we have one other test that is pretty much uh, like the engrave test, but all I've done is actually put in a logo. Uh, in my case, this is like the Imperial logo from Star Wars. And I find um, this is helpful because you basically are getting like the same results as this guy, but you can see more details and more of the edges. So depending on what you're going for, maybe like you want your logo inset inside of your material, it's helpful to see something more than just a square. You can see like what are the type of details you're gonna get at different powers. And again, just like the other engraved test, this is 100 lines per centimeter at one pass. Now, Let's talk about something that's a little bit more tricky, and that is doing a bitmap image in your wood. So this is not a vector file, meaning it knows the math of how the design is created, so you can like blow it up and scale it down and you're not losing any resolution because there really is no resolution. Instead of using um, the engrave card to find your settings, 
Um, I find being able to do an actual image is a lot more helpful. In my case, these tests are using Baby Yoda uh, because pretty much every time I've tested a laser, I've used Baby Yoda. But uh, the picture is actually kind of helpful because you do have a really white area, you have a really dark area, and then you've got the details and the hair and the cloth specifically, and then also some wider details in the eyes uh, to where as you're blowing this up, you can kind of see how much detail is gonna carry through with your laser and then your material. You can see I have this set to Jarvis in 100 lines per centimeter. Jarvis is the way it converts this bitmap image into something the laser can process. So there are a bunch of different modes that you can do. Um, Jarvis is the one that I use the most as well as grayscale. And I actually provide a grayscale version of that exact same test. So you can kind of put them side by side to see what the result is going to be. But if you want to get even more detail to see what all the different processing methods would do, I have a bitmap test, which is this guy right here, that is going to do the same image at the same speed and power at all of those different processing methods. So for you, I would recommend doing the image engrave with either Jarvis or Grayscale to start. Uh, find a point that you think it's going to work pretty well. In my case, it was 40% power at 250 millimeters per second. And then you could just go in and select all of these and adjust the uh, speed and power to be whatever that is. But for the default on this one, I have it set to 40 and to 50. Uh, but then the processing method adjusts. And probably like the easiest way to see this is if we jump into the preview and I zoom way in. And you can see, except for the grayscale, um, all the other processing either has the laser on or has the laser off. And so it's basically making a bunch of different tiny dots and you're building out the image from there. Now grayscale will actually vary the power of the laser to get that, um, but the rest of these will not. Uh, Bayer is probably like the most pronounced it's kind of like a halftone image the way they do it. But you can see there's some subtle adjustments depending on what you select. All right, then the other variable that I kept constant with the image test was the lines per centimeter, uh, AKA what the resolution of your image is. And so this one is going to run at a constant power. Um, we're gonna use Jarvis for the processing. And then the lines per centimeter are gonna go from 100 up to 300 with uh, some varying speeds. And this is where the dot size of your laser is gonna come into play. The more powerful your laser, specifically these diode lasers, uh, the thicker your dot. And there's actually a chart right here that shows the x S1 is in, I think like the 0.08 millimeter range, which converts to around 300. Meaning that like, if you could go higher than 300, you wouldn't get more resolution because the lines would just be overlapping each other. But a lot of times I find not running it at the max like theoretical resolution, you're going to get something that looks better because you're not going to get the overlap of those lines. So that is the whole point of doing this test. And for me, 200 actually winds up looking better than 300 lines per centimeter on this wood with this machine. But again, run the test yourself. That's the whole point of all these. And then from there, you should have a really good idea of the settings that you want to use to do an image on your machine. Now, on all of these tests, I put a little hole right here inside of the B in my logo um, so that you can put these on a chain or a hook or whatever. If there is some type of test or some type of setting that you're having a hard time figuring out, let me know in the comments. I'd love to make a custom test specifically for that. So my plan is to update this. Even if you guys do pick it up, you'll be able to get all the updates in the future. All right, until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.